if we're gonna trick ourselves into believing this is how men are, we should at least aim higher. I've decided I choose life. And she's like, haha, you thought, bitch. Welcome to my vlog. It's currently January 2nd, 2023, guys. Oh my god. Okay, so, um, I don't really know. See, I've had this idea for a really long time. I've just never had the time or like the energy to do it because vlogs are a lot of work they're just so much work so I've never done it but like it seems fun and I really wanted to do it but basically I got this idea like what if I did um, a series on like reading books that I know I'm not gonna like like trash reading them you know because I love trash reading books and I feel like my reactions are so much better and just funnier when I'm hate reading a book than when I'm like reading a book that I enjoy and I enjoy watching vlogs like that so I was like what if I made a series out of it and so here I am and we're gonna be reading A Court of Thorns and Roses because that's the first series that comes to mind when I think of a series that I'm not gonna like I'm just not gonna enjoy it I'm probably gonna hate it so here we are I should also probably mention that this is going to be a spoiler vlog i don't really do non-spoilers because i myself don't enjoy watching like non-spoiler vlogs so i'm not going to do it because i know i'll just articulate my thoughts better if i can just say everything like point blank so this is going to be a spoiler full vlog <laughs> so i have my book and i have my headphones so let's start i guess Okay, so I read this one sentence, and then I got, like, PTSD, because she said, um, oh, he, he said, I couldn't ignore the sheer male beauty of that strong, what is male beauty? Like, why does, okay, so, like, the thing with, like, Sarah J. Mass and, like, a few other authors is that they, like, gender, like, things that aren't normally gendered and they're like male beauty her male like scent like what's male scent like no his male scent i think i said her male scent but i meant his male scent and like her like feminine hand i don't know why why is it like that like why are random things gendered and it's so this is not even like the worst one like male beauty isn't even the worst one i've ever read it's like his her female elbows like why is it like this like it's so irritating and it just it makes me want to stop reading but i'm not i'm gonna read for you guys so you better be grateful hi okay so it's the next day it's jan 3rd um and it's currently 12 18 p.m i read a lot more since yesterday i stayed up to like one reading Okay, so my list of grievances just keeps growing and growing with this book. Like, I read a lot, right, um, in the night, and so I just had to keep making notes every couple pages on, like, everything that happened. Anyway, so she meets Resand, right, at the fire night thingy, and there's, like, the famous there you are, I've been looking for you thing, and then she describes his voice as a lover's purr like what does that mean like why why are they purring now are they like cats like what's going on here and it's not even like once it's like multiple times like it even says at one point like tamlin does something and pharaoh's like it made her want to purr <laughs> what the fuck what does that even mean and then my second thing is so there's a lot of purring. I like literally noted down like every single purring part. Um, but anyway, so there's this thing called Fire Night. And it's basically this like ritual where Tamlin has to have sex with this girl, which allows spring to like happen. I don't really know. It's like something about spring in the human world and like manifesting life. I don't know. So he has sex with a human girl. 
and during this thing he's not like completely himself so he tells Farah like stay in your room don't leave no matter what happens but obviously she leaves and that's when she meets Brisand but later um Lucian sees her and he's like you're not supposed to be here what are you doing like if Tamlin smells you he's gonna want to have sex with you blah 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 and she's like okay and then like she leaves and he like Lucian like takes her back to the house and he leaves her there and then later in the night um she goes to the kitchen and there she sees Tamlin in the kitchen and he's like what are you doing and she's like midnight snack <laughs> and and then he bites her neck because this is a Sarah J Mass book and that's just what we do here but anyway she, but he bites her neck and I think she like slaps him and she runs back upstairs and then the next morning he she's like upset and she's like oh, I can't believe like you bit my neck and then Tamlin has the audacity to say while I might not have been myself Lucian and I both told you to stay in your room Tamlin said like that's basically the equivalent of oh it's your fault for wearing that like so like I know he's not himself but like still that's just so icky but anyway I excuse that I've mostly moved on and then and then it goes like the next like section it breaks and it goes we apologized at dinner he even brought me a bouquet of white roses from his parents garden and it's like oh that's all better now he got you roses oh, that's so sweet roses make up for the neck biting like what the heck like that's so weird it's like here are some roses i'm sorry for biting your neck without your permission like a fucking dog Ugh, i'm sorry cats because they purr now anyway and there's still a lot of purring purred purrs a lot of that <sighs> anyway then she Tamlin sends her away, she comes back again because she literally can't do anything that people tell her to do. Alice is explaining what's going on here. Um, and she's explaining like um, the curse and essentially the curse is like the same curse as in Beauty and the Beast where a human has to fall in love with Tamlin and say I love you before like, she says seven times seven years, which like you can just say 49 years, like it's not that difficult. Anyway, she says seven times seven years, and she has to say I love you before then, and so, yeah, so Alice is explaining all this, except when she's explaining it, it's so, like, okay, here it is, it's like, but not any girl, a human with ice in her heart, with hatred for our kind, a human girl willing to kill a fairy, the ground rocked beneath me, and I was grateful for the wall I leaned, leaned against, worse. The fairy she killed had to be one of his men, sent across the wall by him like lambs to slaughter. The girl could only be brought here to be courted if she killed one of his men in an unprovoked attack, killed him for hatred alone, just as Jurian had done to Cynthia Cly Cluthia. Cluthia, so he could understand her sister, her sister's pain. Like, that's so specific. Like, so specific. Like, crazy. Like, it's literally, like, Oh, we're looking for, she could have just said oh you should a girl named Farah has to like say I love you that's literally what she's asking here she's like a girl named Farah has to say I love you like that's it and like Cindy mentioned it in read with Cindy in like one of her like um reviews of like a court of thorns and roses I love those videos but anyway so she says it she even like calls it out she's like it's so specific we have to do this and then this and then this like it's so true that's literally what happens here like it's so specific that it's like kind of funny it's like a human girl willing to kill a fairy okay worse the fairy she killed had to be one of his men <laughs> and it had to be sent by him okay <laughs> The girl could only be brought here to court it if she killed one of his men in an unprovoked attack. It has to be unprovoked. It can't be provoked either. Okay, like, that's so specific. You basically have to, like, give them a script and be like, oh, yeah, follow this and then bring the girl home. Like, it's so random <laughs> and so funny. But anyway, it's kind of picking up. In the beginning, I just, I honestly just wanted to, like skip the entire first book and just go to the second book because I know most of what happens and it's like 
everyone has said like the first book is really boring nothing really happens and i don't expect to like the second book but like at least i won't be bored like i was bored of this for a really long time like now it's kind of picking up because like things are happening and i read a little more and now she's going under the mountain to like free tamlin and stuff so i think i think this is where things get better i have another update okay so amarantha gives her a riddle right to solve if like instead of doing the three trials and like the answer is love like everyone knows this it's not a big deal everyone but Farah knows this and during the third trial like before it starts amarantha literally says like she's like you never figured out my riddle did you i didn't respond and she smiled pity the answer is so lovely like Farah she literally put it out in front of you she literally told you the answer and you still can't get it like you have to be really special for that to happen so i finished okay so it's much later it's like 9 p.m and i just got back from somewhere but also so Vera is supposed to get married like tomorrow in the book and I I feel and Reesten hasn't come back to like take her away for like the one week a month thing. So I have a feeling he's just gonna come like at the last possible minute and I don't know. I don't know. So I didn't read anything like at all yesterday, but I did in the night again, because that's like the time I have. But so far um, I think I left off where they decided that a Highburn, the king of Highburn, is going to try to resurrect Jurian in order to defeat Prithian. And so Rhysand and Farah go to the Bone Carver and they ask questions about whether it's possible to resurrect someone who's dead. Um, and... I think the bone carver tells her something but i forgot what he tells her i don't know but anyway um so they go to the bone carver the bone carver says a bunch of things about the cauldron and then they decide that they're gonna go and ask the mortal queens um for help so they both they all go like all of them like cassie and asriel resand and farah they go to farah's sister's house and they ask Nesta and Elaine um, if they can stay there and, like, send a letter to the mortal queen and hold a meeting there if they agree to the meeting. Um, and they both, Nesta and Elaine, agree, and they send a letter, and they're there for a while, and then they leave. Oh, but before that, I forgot. Um, Resand realizes that the only, like, Okay, the bone carver tells, sorry, this is all over the place, but the bone carver tells Rhysand and Farah that the king of Highburn has a piece of the cauldron, and that's really, really powerful. So, to nullify the power of the cauldron, they need this book called the Book of Breathings, and the Book of Breathings has, like, a bunch of spells on it, and that's why they have to go to the mortal queens to ask for a part of the book, because they have it. So... They go there, and Rhysand realizes that Farah can kind of sense objects, like magical objects, I think. So to test this out, he takes her to this woman named the Weaver. And the Weaver basically has, like, a bunch of objects in her house that she took from people and stuff, or that people gave her. And he tells her, you go in there, and you take the object, you don't touch anything else, don't make any noise, and just come out. So she goes in she takes finds the object she takes it and it's like a ring okay and she takes it and then she's running out except the bone carver like hears her or senses her and comes after her and then she has like this whole panic attack there and then she realizes no i have to get out i have to like fight blah blah, blah. and then she leaves and then when she's out um and she gives the ring to resand he kind of reveals to her that like the only reason he really sent her in there was not really for the ring like he didn't care that much about the ring 
it was just for so that she'll get over her own panic and learn to like manage herself and she gets mad at him and she yeah she gets really mad at him except she realizes the ring is his mom's ring and she gave it to the bone carver when he came of age when he like matured so that he won't waste it or something so yeah that's what happened and now they're waiting for the mortal queens to reply to the letter and Farah is finding out all these things about like Amarin and Moore and Cassian and Azrael and everything and it's it's something but now they're going to the autumn court because I actually don't know why they're going to the, no they're going to the summer court let me check <laughs> I yeah they're going to the summer court um for reasons unknown but yeah and um Farah is also learning how to fight from Cassian and Resand is helping her um like manage her abilities because now she has powers and they're slowly like coming into focus I guess so he's helping her with that Cassian is helping her with regular training and yeah um nothing really appalling has happened so far there have been a few purrs they keep purring again and yes that's basically it um, also, <laughs> the forest in which the weaver is in, like, it's described, like, really, like, there's, like, forest, and there's, like, a cottage in the clearing and stuff, and I imagine it like that cottage that the witch has in Brave, like, the movie, that Marita goes into the witch's cottage and gets, like, that little pie thingy for her mom, like, that's how I imagine the cottage to look. That's how I imagine the weaver's cottage to look. Like, that's how it will stay in my head. Even the weaver's, like, house. That's how I imagine it to look. But, yeah. Um. That's what they're doing. Um. Yeah. It's okay. It's not, like, so much better than the first book. It's, I guess, a little more is happening. And she's not just, like sitting there like she used to but like again nothing really interesting is happening like things like it's just okay so things are happening and Farrah doesn't know why they're happening and then like after they happen Rhysand's like oh yeah this is why they happen because of course he knows all along and he's just like hiding these things from her so yeah and since we're in Farrah's perspective we don't know what's happening until Farrah knows what's happening and she's stupid so it takes her a really long time to understand these things <sighs> anyway i have like 300 more pages to go i'm literally 49 percent through and there are like 640 something pages in this so don't know when i'm gonna read this but yeah it's not horrible by any means i thought i would like hate it and be like why does this exist because it would just be so like i don't know problematic but it's not as problematic as i thought it would be it's still pretty bad it's like it's so boring i don't know what's happening i don't like free sand he's kind of just irritating like it's just he's not even like that feminist he's just like normal he's just like showing the bare minimum like respect that you can receive like he's like yeah it's your choice and people are like oh my god it's her choice like that's it he's literally just acknowledging the fact that she has autonomy over herself and that nobody controls her and somehow that's like huge i mean i guess it is huge because like normal men don't do that but like still still i think if we're gonna trick ourselves into believing this is how men are we should at least aim higher but oh yeah but now i actually have to draw some more so i'm working on this thing 
and I don't know if you can see it, but all day yesterday, this is all I got. Yeah, but anyway, I'm working on this. I need to finish it by Saturday, but I don't think that's going to happen. So we'll see how it goes, but that's why I can't read. So we're going to do this now. Okay, so a lot has happened since the last time I updated. Like, a lot has happened. Um, I'm now on chapter 52. The last time I updated, I was on chapter 32 or 42. So, 42, I think. Yeah, Vera finds out. We send is her mate. She's very upset that he hid it from her, but she doesn't seem upset about the fact that he is her mate. Like, he, she doesn't really care about that. She just cares that he didn't tell her. And, yeah. Basically, that's all that's really happening right now. It's kind of picking up, I guess. Like, it's not as boring as it was in the beginning, but I still feel like it could be so much shorter. All these books that are like 600 pages, like they rarely ever like need to be 600 pages or like 700 pages. If you reduced it, like cut out a bunch of chapters, cut out a bunch of like reworded things. Like the thing I noticed about Sarah J. Mass is she reuses certain phrases to describe certain characters or certain actions like over and over again. Like she reuses that same phrase just constantly like all the time to describe that one character or that one action and it's that same <laughs> phrase over and over and she does this thing where she tries to add as much detail as possible so she says one word then she puts an m dash describes it it's like the bicycle or like um what is it like, okay, something like the bicycle, okay? The blue shining bicycle. And then I'm dash again, and then she, like, continues on with her sentence. She, like, she does that constantly, like, all the time. And it's so unnecessary, and I feel like if you removed half of those, like, unneeded details, then this book would be so much shorter and so much easier to get through. Like, I've rarely ever seen a book that is more than 400 pages that needs to be more than 400 pages like most of the time books that are like around 500 600 pages they could have easily been like 300 pages and they would have been better for it and not worse it would have been lacking in any way because some of the things that happen here don't need to happen some of the things that are said don't need to be said like it's so unnecessary and so like irrelevant and i'm not saying that everything that happens has to be relevant but i feel like there's a point where it's like you have to consider if you find this interesting like if you were reading a book or like when you're writing and you're reading like you have to think about like oh if i was reading this would i genuinely care and it's no no you wouldn't care if the bicycle is blue like you know i don't know if i'm making sense but yeah I feel like I always complain about this with super long books. I don't mind reading super long books. It's just, it's about whether it would be better if it was longer or like, you know, quality over quantity. That's all I need to say. We're back on my floor, and I finished A Court of Mist and Fury. 
that ending was really, really something. That was something. And now I have to read the third book, which is the final book. Um, in this video, I'm not going to read the Christmas novella or Nesta's book because I've decided I choose life. So I think I can only handle three. So I'm only reading the original trilogy. Hi. Okay, so it's, it's, it's been a while. It's currently January 10th, 2023, obviously. And I finished A Court of Wings and Ruin, and I haven't updated you guys at all. <laughs> reading this entire book because I just felt like it would be so much easier if I just finished it and then updated it all at once. Um, so I'm going to update A Court of Wings and Ruin and then update for the entire series as a whole and what I felt about it, but I don't think there's going to be much for that because I feel like I've covered most of my thoughts in like previous clips and stuff. But anyway, so this book starts off with Thera at the Spring Court. Um, she's staying with Tamlin because she made a deal um she didn't make a deal she just kind of said I will come with you like she acted as if Rhysand had control over her and was like oh like I loved you this whole time and then she told Rhysand take my sisters away I, I went over all this but anyway now she's in the spring court in the beginning of this book and Essentially what she does is she turns everyone in the spring court against each other, against Tamlin especially. So now everyone's against Tamlin and that's when she makes her big exit out of the spring court. And I'm just trying to get it so I can get out my notes and stuff. But it's a very long book. It is 800 pages. I, I've said this before, but I will keep saying it because it is 800 pages. So... Anyway, so she gets out of spring, spring Court with Lucian because Lucian's like, you have to take me with you, like, I need to see Elaine, because surprise, surprise, Elaine and Lucian are now mates, because why wouldn't they be mates? But yeah, now they're mates, and they're out of Spring Court, you know, things are jolly. She is reunited with Resand. Notes on this book? They vomit too much, and I kept rolling my eyes every five seconds, so maybe that's a problem. But, first of all, they vomit too much. Every five seconds, they're vomiting, and you've, you've been here for a thousand years, maybe more. I think you should be used to blood by now. Like, Cassian vomits. Risa never vomits, but I think Cassian vomits. Vera vomits, T Lucian vomits, like, they should be used to blood, right? Like, they've been in wars before. That's kind of what this book revolves around. Anyway, at this point, now, Vera and Resand are this huge power couple, which is great for them, but unfortunate for me, because I have to deal with it. Cassian and Nesta have something going on. Asriel and Elaine seem to have the start of something going on. Um, but yeah. Also, there was one part um, where Vera is talking about something and she says, and I knew my mate better, perhaps better than I knew myself while talking about Rhysand. And it's like, no, you don't. Vera doesn't know Rhysand. Because constantly, every five minutes, every time he says something or does something, she's constantly surprised. She's always like, I can't believe he did that. Like, oh my god. And then they have a whole discussion about it and they apologize. Like, oh, I should have told you. And then it happens again. Like, no, you don't know him. So don't lie. Every single character that is not straight has been in this book. Like, all in this one book. None of the other books have these characters, have this representation. They all just decide to come out in this book and reveal themselves in this book. That aside, it's okay, I know how Sarah J. Maas works, but that aside, more comes out for six pages, front and back. She comes out to Farah, and she just keeps going and going and going, and there are a lot of ellipses because that's just how she writes. It's like, 
I don't dot 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 I don't know dot 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 and it just keeps going and she repeats herself which is why it's six pages but again you know an author is straight when the coming out paragraph monologue is six pages that's when you know um my last grievance well my last important grievance is the fact that it mentions that Resand was sleeping naked in the middle of the war. He was sleeping naked in the middle of a war while his enemy was two miles, maybe, maybe more, away from him. He was sleeping naked. He actively made the decision to take off all his clothes and sleep. And sleep is when you are most vulnerable. So imagine what would have happened if someone decided to attack his tent. It is a tent. It's not even a house. It is a flimsy tent. What would he have done? Like, got up naked and then like, oh, really? Like, what is going on? Why? 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 Like, sir, you are in the middle of the war. I hope you know that. Vera and Resand we're all we're talking in the second book about how Resand wishes that there were equal rights between a high fae and lesser fae and how those titles don't matter and for someone who thinks those don't matter they sure seem to like using them a lot because Resand calls Vera high lady a lot and Vera calls herself and addresses herself as high lady a lot and for someone who doesn't believe in titles you really really like yours anyway i finished the book so now i'm just going to review the entire series as a whole as a whole i would give the series 2.5 stars because i did not hate it i didn't enjoy it i it was falsely adver advertised first of all because resand was he people told me that he's a feminist that he is the feminist king when in actuality he just acknowledges the fact that Vera, a woman, is allowed to have autonomy and control over herself and that she doesn't belong to anybody. The standards are in hell, guys. The bar, you can't even see it anymore. It's not there. There's no, there's no bar. I take it back. There are no standards either. We have no standards. They're just gone. Now, Fer now Resand is somehow feminist because he acknowledges that women aren't property so yeah that's basically it i hope you enjoyed the vlog i am proud of myself for finishing this series um i struggled but it's okay i don't think this is the last time i will struggle for this series or this series of um vlogs where I'm going to read books that I know or I think that I will hate. Um, let me know if you want me to read the rest of her books. Um, I read Throne of Glass. I haven't finished the series. I really don't want to finish the series. Just not in the mood for it. But I could read A Court of Silver Flames if that is something you guys would be interested in. So comment down below if you want to see a vlog of me reading that and the next series you guys want me to read that i will hate featuring the deal crescent city um so the deal is the off-campus series and addicted and briar U series so those are the ones i'm contemplating so far but let me know in the comments and see you in the next one <laughs>